it is said, we all have zinc in our lives. Zinc as a natural resource has presence in almost everything that we either utilize or consume. From infrastructure to galvanization to automobiles, medicines, cosmetics and zinc as a nutrient. Zinc is one of the most important and utilized natural resources in the world. But not many people would know that India is the country that gave zinc to the world. The carbon dating has proved that zinc mining and smelting in India started about 3000 years ago. The old retorts at Zawar in Rajasthan are the testimonies of ancient zinc mining in India. In India, Hindustan Zinc, a Vedanta Group company in zinc, lead, silver, wind energy business, is India's only integrated producer and world's leading zinc producer. This is a story of a company that gave India its zinc and lead sufficiency. A story that has its roots in ancient India. A story that would drive modern India, make in India. We have all the natural resources like oil and gas, iron ore, gold, silver, fertilizer. We have to develop this in most environmental friendly manner to take our country forward. These Aravali ranges are very, very rich as far as mineral wells is concerned. My ancestors, Mahana Laka, in the 14th century, uh, started uh, the mining of zinc uh, in, uh, in Java. Maharana Lakha, a metallurgist himself, hired the local tribals for mining. Their sense of geology was extraordinary. They could locate exact positions of galena in the rocks. Through the carbon dating, it was established that the mining had been ongoing since 3000 years. But smelting came to an end in the year 1813. The reasons are not clearly known. In 1942, the British government thought of developing Zawar as an alternative source of zinc and lead metal production. So the first job of the mining people here was to select 25 tons of lead ore, that is galena, and send it to Tundo for keeping the smelting on. In 1960, the idea to establish the Debari plant was envisioned. A project report was prepared to produce 18,000 tons zinc metal per year. The foundation of Debari smelting plant was laid on 26th January 1962. 26th October 1965. Metal Corporation of India was nationalized by an act of parliament. On 10th January 1966, the company was incorporated as Hindustan Zinc Limited. In the beginning, Debari smelter was a modest 18,000 tons of metal production unit. Debari Zinc smelting plant was designed second in the world and commissioned eighth in line. A team was prepared for commissioning the plant. They were posted at Debari hostel for three and a half months and worked all day and all night to commission the plant. It was so troublesome to start the plant. A Sikh gentleman, Karnel Singh, observed that the light material is not fluidizing in the system. So he used river sand to start the plant and then feed the raw material. And it worked. During those days, the simple tribal people were isolated from mainstream India where industrial operations and heavy machinery were gaining ground. The mining activities frightened the tribal residents of the area. 
The noise of shaft sinking scared them. Workers were hired from Nepal to continue mining operations. Gradually, locals overcame their initial apprehension and began to realize that new job opportunities were going to improve their living standards. Hindustan Jing completed the mine, which was designed to produce 2,000 tons per day. Completed the first smelter, that was 18,000 tons per year. The Balaria mine was designed by our own pupil. No expert was taken from outside. Mr. Paliwal and his group, they have designed that mine. In the years 1975 to 76, Hindustan Zinc posted a profit of 10 crore rupees. Since then, the company has always remained in profit. There were greater milestones to come. In 1978, the Vizag smelter was commissioned to produce zinc from imported concentrates. It was expected at that time that the plant in Vishakhapatnam will import concentrates, import concentrates from abroad and convert that into metal. And that's, and that's why the plant had to be in the port. The Rajpura Dariba mine was rediscovered by Geological Survey of India. And this time, Hindustan Zinc got the approval. The mine was developed to produce 3,000 tons of ore per day. In 1979, Hindustan Zinc learned about the discovery of lead zinc prospects, located at Rampura Agucha, which was quite close to their operation at Udaipur. One morning, a geologist named Mr. Rampuria went for a walk. It is common for geological explorers to bend down and pick up a piece of stone and scrutinize a seemingly innocuous rock formation as they stroll about. Gosan ke sample ikhatte karne ke baad mein, maine jab tevars le raha tha, to kuch jage mere ko slag bhi dikhai diya. Slag ke bhi sample maine ikhatte kiye, aur baad mein maine jab inki analysis karwai, to isme lead and zinc ki matra 5% ke aas paas mili, aur Further work करने के बाद में जब मैं second time में कुछ sample इकट्ठे किए उसमें से एक sample में मुझे 35% zinc की value मिली जो कि काफी encouraging थी. In the years ahead, these findings were going to transform the topography of the area and the zinc lead mining landscape of the world. A proposal was prepared for asserting the core reserve and rupees 1 crore and 10 lakh was calculated to be the project cost. The government sanctioned 1 crore 25 lakh rupees for the project and asked to finish the job in 24 months instead of 36 months. Within 12 months, 53 million tons of core reserve of ore was established with 12% zinc and 1.5% lead. The construction of Chanderia smelter and Rampura Agucha mine commenced in November 1989 and the mine was commissioned in 1991. The first blast furnace based pyro smelter was commissioned at Chanderia with the aid of British technology. Mining in Agucha began at a very small scale. The ore was treated at Zawar and Rajpura Dariba beneficiation plants where lead and zinc concentrates were produced and sent to Vizag plant, which saved in foreign exchange for the company. Hindustan Zinc notionally earned 90 crores of rupees because that much of concentrate was to be imported. It would have cost more money because that time it was 12,000 rupees a ton. Hindustan Zinc never asked for capital for their development from Government of India. By 1999, Hindustan Zinc became a debt-free company. It was a zero debt and cash in hand, which is a very rare for a government companies. And that is all due to because of dedicated and honest manpower. We should have a, say, like a family. 
and we should run as a family. It is not your property, it is my property, it is a property of government of India. And total responsibility of ours to keep this organization alive and better way. I think the major factor of Hindustan Zing being a successful company over a period of time has been the dedication and commitment of the people. Because they were told that it was their plant. They were proud of the fact that they belonged to Hindustan Zing. The 21st century brought great transformation to the world. While the global business climate was changing, India made a clear shift from a command economy to a more liberalized and open market economy. Hindustan Zinc held potential for even greater prospects. It was an asset yet to be explored and needed further investment, modern technology and a management where decision-making would be swift. Hindustan Zing created an opportunity thinking someday a wise man with the vision will encash it. It was 10th April 2002, a landmark decision privatized Hindustan Zing and Sterlite Group was declared successful bidder for Hindustan Zing. After we took over, we made a full strategy and we realized that the people of the companies are very committed, kept the same management and we opened up their vision and said make this company as a world-class company. The primary focus was on the Chanderia smelter and Rampura Aguja mine. The total metal production stood at 204,000 tons. Of this, 170,000 tons was zinc and about 35,000 tons of lead was being produced. The mine production stood at 3.45 million tons per annum and reserves and resources stood at 143.5 million tons. The next came that we should reach to the capacity of 0.5 million ton in the lead and zinc that started in 2003-04 and completed in the 2005-06. In 2006, we thought that there is a further opportunity to expand our capacity. So as part of the phase two expansion, we have put a 210,000 tons of zinc smelter, a 80 megawatt power plant which was required for that, and the mining expansion. So that was our phase two. With the subsequent major achievements, including the commissioning of the hydrometallurgical smelter 2 at Chanderia, production increased by another 170,000 tons and de-bottlenecking of Debari smelter adding another 5,000 tons. This led Hindustan Zinc in becoming the second largest zinc producer in the world in 2008. Then came the 1 million ton target, so we started from 0.5 to 1 million ton, which we completed in the 2010-11. And uh, that also timeline was with respect to the, our own reference, what we have done earlier. In phase three, Rajpura Dariba complex was expanded. With the increase in mining production, New zinc and lead smelters were planned. A 210,000 ton zinc smelter was commissioned in July 2011. The plant achieved its retreat capacity after just eight months of operation. The same year, a 100,000 ton lead smelter and a 160 megawatt power plant were commissioned. We were the first mine in India actually to introduce this class of the equipments and started very well. And over and above that, uh, this utilization of these equipments were very close to the world benchmark locations. These equipments are being run 5,500 to 6,000 operating hours in a year, uh, which, is a, which is a benchmark in itself in this class. So this is how we did uh, this expansion to take our you know, metal capacity to a million tons. And now currently uh, what we are doing, we are now further expanding our mining capacity because our open cast mining is tapering down. So we have taken a huge uh, project of underground mine development from current 5 million ton to 15 million ton. Hindustan Zinc is successfully harnessing wind energy, which is sustainable and environment friendly. 
it has completed commissioning of 273.5 megawatts of wind farms and the power generated is sold to national grid the initiative has been registered under clean development mechanism program by united nations framework convention on climate change perhaps one of the reasons for the widespread zinc mining in zawar in ancient times was the desire to find silver and silver can usually be found in the proximity of zinc and lead ores mining silver presents a viable commercial opportunity which no modern operation could overlook in 2002 hindustan zinc's production of silver stood at 47 tons the ramping up of the sindesar khurd mine in 2012 has resulted in doubling this capacity to about 500 tons of silver in the same year the pantnagar silver refinery was commissioned today hindustan zinc is the largest primary producer of silver in india at hindustan zinc the absolute commitment to preserving the environment is non negotiable The company has about 1.4 million plantation in and around its business locations. It is at the core of the business practice of Hindustan Zinc to manage and minimize the environmental impact of operations. All units maintain a zero discharge standard and the company is on its way to reaching zero waste standard as well. Keeping in view water conservation as one of the primary focus area Hindustan Zinc in association with government of Rajasthan has constructed the first ever private sewage treatment plant in the city of Lakes Udaipur constructed under the public private partnership this sewage treatment plant treats 20 million liters of sewage per day and the company is looking to expand its capacity Hindustan Zinc has a state of the art central research and development laboratory which was established by the company in 1976 with an objective to enhance metal recoveries to recover values from the waste and optimize waste management exploration program at Hindustan Zinc is integral to its growth and expansion process It's incredible support for exploration within the Vedanta group Uh, which flows on down to Hindustan Zinc. So, starts with uh, the chairman uh, Anil Agarwal. Um, very, very positive, and uh, that that is that is a, a huge advantage. The company has dynamically increased its exploration focus through a dedicated team of geologists and employing the cutting-edge technologies. The reserves and resources, which were about 143.7 million tons in 2002 rose to 375 million tons in 2015-16 this means that hindustan zinc has a comfortable mine life of over 25 years building leaders from within the organization has been the core philosophy of hindustan zinc through a systematic grooming process The young graduates drive processes at leadership positions. With a talent pool of about 5000 regular employees and 10000 contract employees, the company has developed metro culture at its locations that has about 20% female employees in fresh intake at the shop floors. As mining and smelting operations are located in remote villages, It is important to build well structured townships for the employees. After all, employees are the assets of the company. Each location has its own township which has all the required facilities and amenities. The Vedanta group philosophy believes in taking care of the community residing near business locations. Several programs have been launched to improve agriculture. health and sanitation water harvesting child care economic empowerment of rural and tribal women youth training 
and livestock development. Taking forward the vision of Chairman Mr. Anil Agarwal on childcare, Hindustan Zinc has launched a project, Khushi. Khushi has adopted about 3,100 childcare centers and promotes care for deprived and underprivileged children in India, their nutrition, health, and education. The teaching in these Khushi centers is through play way method and the children receive three nutritious meals in a day. It is said, when you empower a rural woman, you in turn empower her entire family, the society and country as a whole. This ultimately adds to the progress of a nation. To bring social and economic empowerment in rural and tribal women in Rajasthan, Hindustan Zinc started forming self-help groups in 2006. Sakhi, as these groups are known, and Sakhis, as the group members are known, has been playing a significant role towards economic empowerment of these rural women. From the focus on social empowerment, Project Sakhi has been focusing on economic empowerment. Many product-based clusters have been launched that are providing direct economic empowerment to these rural and tribal women of Rajasthan. Recently, for the first time in India, Hindustan Zinc, under the project Sakhi, developed a fashion garments cluster and to provide specific market to rural women, organized a fashion show in Jaipur. This was the first time when rural Karigars directly showcased the fashion garments made by them on the ramp, wore by top models from Delhi and Mumbai. As Mr. Anil Agarwal says, before we start a business, it is important to see the welfare of the community residing in and around our business locations. I look at this Hindustan Zinc as a more of a uh, future company where we have a tremendous exploration team and uh, we will make very big investment in exploration of gold, potash, which is fertilizer, silver, uh, uh, rock phosphate is require a huge investment and we are fully committed. Today, Hindustan Zinc is the flagship company of Vedanta Group. Since its disinvestment in 2002, the Vedanta Group has put in an impressive 12,000 crore rupees for its expansion. 375 million tons of reserves and resources have been established. Captive thermal power generation stands at 474 megawatts. Wind power generation at 273.5 megawatts per annum. It is also the largest silver producing company in India and aims to produce over 500 tons of silver. Hindustan Zinc is the highest royalty and tax contributor in Rajasthan. As the company completes 50 years in service to the nation, new goals and new visions have been set up. It is said, growth and prosperity above the earth has its roots below the earth. Optimum utilization of natural resources have played decisive role in stabilizing economy of many countries. Hindustan Zinc is a success story of India, a company that proudly believes in being called Zinc of India. After all, we all have zinc in our lives.